Welcome to another unit in this SPSS course. This time I'm going to show you two approaches how you can detect outliers in a data set. Outliers, so values which do not really fit into the overall, well, general outlook of what you have there as your data set. So they have to high values to low values or from their structure they're slightly different. So the first approach which works decently well if you only have one variable, which is well responsible for generating the outliers. If you have only one, you could go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, then click here on Explore. And for example, here I have a variable BMI, so Body Mass Index. I could put this to Dependent Lists with Statistics I also click here on outliers. This gives me an extra idea about outliers. And if I click on plots, I could, if I want to, also check here the normality plots with tests. With options, I do not have to change anything, so I could stay with this. Click OK. Then he does different things. First off, he gives me some general descriptives. So far, so good. But the first interesting thing are here my extreme values. So the top five highest values and the top five lowest values. So this might directly tell me which values are way off from whatever we have. And then, for example, here I see that the normal BMI goes from somewhere in the very simple version 20 to 25 and well those two or those three are more than five units away from this here even the lowest ones they are still okay so even this while I think very slim would be halfway okay so it's only three points away from the lower bound this, however, is more or less 12 points, 12 and a half points above the maximum. So that's really an outline. So this is the first idea to actually discuss which are our outliers. Second idea to actually illustrate this a bit more. We can see in the lower part if we switch to our box plot. The box plot gives us two information on outliers. First off, we see we have those circles here and these asterisks. Whenever you have a circle, this tells you those are potential outliers. If you have asterisks, those are severe outliers. Well, if we have here 43, 284, if I go back to the top, 43, 284, that's the top two. So they are really severe outliers. But those three, so place three, four, and five, they are also outliers. But not the only ones and not severe ones. So there's in general an additional whoops, an additional six outliers, which are however not so severe. The interesting thing here in the lower part. there's basically no outlier. So all the values with 17 something, they are not really considered outliers. So this is a good idea to get a first graphical idea, whether we have outliers or not. A different idea would be, an outlier could also be something which does not really fit in the distribution. So first off, we could run a normality test, whether this is normal distributed, well here, both tests report significance level of zero, so both are not normally distributed. And then here we have these QQ plots telling us which or how many values significantly differ from the normal distribution. And we see it's some of the lower ones, but it's particular those two up here, which are really problematic. Well, that's again 43, 284. So the two we already detected earlier. 
And we see them in both of those graphs. So that's also an idea how to find outliers. All of this is based on one variable. If I have more than one variable, what I could do is, for example, run a cluster analysis. So I could go to classify, hierarchical clusters, and then put something here in variables. So for example, if I go with height and weight, I leave this as cases, go to statistics, um, no, sorry, go to plots, activate the dendrogram, deactivate the icicles, go to method, use that uh, standardization because they are both in different units. And here with cluster method, I'm using nearest neighbor. I click continue. Click OK. Now wait a little bit for this to be finished. So here, this is my dendrogram. If I clicked on nearest neighbor, I can go to the very bottom. And here I see in the bottom those who are significantly different. Then, well, that's again the same guys as before, 43 and 284. But I see there's one guy, 100. 33, which is also a bit strange. So this could be that just the structure is a bit different, bit off, or that this guy also behaves differently as before. So while those should be excluded at all costs, this one, and perhaps this one here as well, they should at least be checked, see whether they are really different from all the others. So this is a different way to check whether they actually are different. Whereas here, at this point, we actually check for difference in levels. Of course, if I go back to classify, hierarchical clusters, methods, here I've selected Euclidean distance or squared Euclidean distance. So I selected a measure of distance, a metric. So this goes for nearness. If I would select something like Pearson correlation, this would go for nearness, for association. And this would test more for structure. So if I click continue, OK. Again, wait a bit. And here I see regarding structure, it's basically two groups. That's all there is. So there's no real outliers regarding the structure. So it's just worth checking out regarding the level, at least those four. Or, well, if I'm not so critical, at least this one here. Because this looks different than all the others. Those one we already saw. In the other part, they also are different. And well, that's done different approaches, how we can actually find out whether we have some kind of outliers, which we in a later analysis should perhaps exclude because they might bias our results, might skew our analysis. Well, as I said, that's all I wanted to talk about in this unit, all I wanted to present to you. So I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you're looking for additional input on SPSS, feel free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.